radiation and colorectal cancer. This is one of a series of cancer videos found on the website about cancer.com. The focus of this video is on the use of radiation in treatment of primarily rectal cancer. The best advice on treatment is found on the website of the nccn.org. If you review my previous videos, I discuss this. They do have very detailed treatment guidelines both for colon cancer and rectal cancer. And in simple terms, they recommend surgery for the early stages. For patients with more advanced rectal cancer, they recommend preoperative chemotherapy and radiation, that is, prior to surgery. And for patients who have recurrent or metastatic disease, there may be a role for radiation in those patients as well. With colon cancer, the workup generally is to rule out metastatic disease prior to surgery. And after surgery, chemotherapy is commonly used, but rarely radiation. For rectal cancer, it's necessary to determine the stage prior to surgery, because if the cancer is locally advanced, radiation and chemo should be given prior to surgery for rectal cancer. Commonly, an endorectal ultrasound would be performed. This has been shown to be more accurate than a CAT scan or an MRI on demonstrating the correct stage, both the tumor and the lymph nodes. And an ultrasound will image this and show the depth of the invasion. And these would be typical pictures showing ultrasound images of lymph nodes or muscle invasion in rectal cancer. Rectal cancer is different than colon cancer in that it's common for rectal cancer patients to recur in the pelvic region is shown on these little green spots on this 3D reconstruction. It's quite easy for radiation to cover these sites, and so combining radiation with surgery will lower the risk of a local or pelvic relapse or recurrence. This is a typical surgical picture of what would be resected, the dotted lines, and how the radiation field in green can basically expand the area of coverage and cover this area more widely. Similarly, a front view showing the area where a surgeon would resect the tumor and how the radiation field can cover a much wider area safely. If a patient is going to receive radiation, normally they would start out with a so-called simulation. A CAT scan is obtained at this time. The patient's body is brought into the computer system and the organs are targeted or imaged the radiation oncologist will develop a radiation field or radiation portal that will cover the areas that he considers at high risk shown in the dark blue in this picture. Again he will use the anatomy and the history of where these cancers typically recur or relapse to determine what would be a suitable radiation field. There are textbook images of typical radiation targets or fields. There are guidelines both from the NCCN and the RTOG about how big the radiation field should be and what structures should be included. The RTOG or Radiation Therapy Oncology Group even has website guidelines and atlases to help the physician determine the proper anatomy that needs to be contoured or targeted or marked out for the computer both on the CT scans in various positions. And these are all available to the radiation oncologist today. Again, the goal here would be the radiation zone to cover the areas at risk. Often there will be a larger field that will be low-dose radiation and a more highly targeted field to the precise cancer area. These would be typical computer-generated images. The cancer is in red and the green cloud is the radiation zone. PET scans can be very helpful for the radiation oncologist. The cancer is shown as the gray structure that's a little thick on the CAT scan. And the image below shows on the PET scan how nicely it lights this up and shows the physician exactly where the cancer is. Similar I images where a PET scan will so-called light up or show the cancer. In other cases from a, both the front view and the side view showing very extensive rectal cancer that would help guide the radiation targeting. And so this would be a typical patient. The PET scan identifies the location of the cancer in the rectum. And this is contoured into the computer system so the radiation area can widely cover the cancer and the other areas at risk. Another similar case, the PET scan helping the physician demonstrate the radiation target. And again, the radiation clouds surrounding this area. 
and an internal view again showing how much more widely the radiation field can cover the region around the cancer. And typical radiation fields or computer plans showing the small colored lines surrounding the cancer and the lymph nodes and possible areas of spread. The PET scan also, of course, would show if the cancer is spread elsewhere. Unfortunately, this patient's PET scan showed the cancer had already spread to the liver. And there are techniques the radiation oncologist may use, treating the patient prone or on their stomach with a belly board or some technique to push the small intestine out of the way of the field. The benefits of combining chemoradiation prior to surgery have been shown. They'll lower the risk of a local relapse in the pelvic region and improve the survival. If given prior to surgery, they may help the surgeon avoid a permanent colostomy if the tumor shrinks down enough. And if given before surgery rather than after surgery, there may be less complications. This was studies back in the 1980s that showed clearly a better cure rate and overall outcome for patients with advanced rectal cancer if the surgery was combined with chemotherapy radiation. There were studies from a German trial comparing preoperative and postoperative that showed patients who had the radiation given preoperatively had a slightly better survival, but clearly a lower relapse rate and lower complications. So this trial was an important study encouraging physicians to determine who would need radiation and if they needed to give it pre-op rather than post-op. And typical PET scans will show the tumor shrinking down with pre-op chemoradiation. This is before and three weeks later. The yellow area where the active cancer is much smaller. Similar PET scan from the side view showing the yellow cancer area is now much smaller. Typical appearance using a colonoscopy. The upper image was the bloody cancer tumor mass prior to chemoradiation. And the lower image was afterwards and before surgery. The goal then is to shrink the tumor, either the volume of the tumor in the upper image or the location, the closeness to the rectal sphincter or muscle. If this shrinks down, this may help the surgeon avoid a permanent colostomy. And in studies on pre-op chemoradiation, the so-called sphincter preservation rate or the ability to lower the need for colostomy is significant. In one series of studies, about 67 percent of the patients were able to avoid a permanent colostomy. The typical course of preoperative radiation is generally Monday through Friday, five days a week. The usual recommended treatment in the United States is 28 treatments for five and a half weeks. The treatments take a few minutes. This is generally combined with daily chemotherapy, usually continuous IV infusion 5-FU, or perhaps oral chemotherapy such as Zalota. The typical side effects don't show up for a couple of weeks and fade away a week or two after radiation is completed. And the surgery is commonly scheduled for three to six weeks after completing radiation. The side effects of pelvic radiation uh, are shown here. The radiation may hit the small bowel as well as the colon. And so abdominal cramps, tenderness, diarrhea, and fatigue are all common, particularly when combined with chemotherapy. From a side view, the bladder, sacral bone, and rectum will be in the field. So urinary burning and frequency, vaginal irritation in a woman, anal rectal irritation in a man are all common side effects. Radiation can be used in a palliative sense for local recurrence or if there's areas spread elsewhere, such as the liver, bone, or brain. The response rate for recurrent pelvic mass can be quite high, 64 to 85 percent of the time. The radiation will shrink the tumor mass enough to relieve pain, bleeding, or discomfort. If the cancer is spread elsewhere, this was a colon cancer, this spread to the abdominal mesenteric region. The surgeons were not able to cut this out. It was easily seen on a PET CT. And this was targeted with IMRT or image guided IMRT using a tomotherapy device and it was possible to put a radiation field around this mass and get rid of it. If you look at the statistics on SBRT, or stereotactic body radiation, for recurrent abdominal pelvic cancers, about 60% of the time they will respond to radiation. 
Low dose liver radiation has about a 40 to 80 percent response rate on at least relieving pain or pressure over the liver. Highly targeted radius, radiation or radiosurgery is even better. This was a patient who had a single liver met that was treated with a cyber knife and it got rid of the lesion completely. There's a large literature now on radiosurgery for liver metastases, 80 to 90 percent response rate. In another series, the local recurrence rate was only 17 percent. Radiation is good for brain metastases, commonly whole brain radiation. This was a typical patient with rectal cancer spread to the brain. It took several months, but it faded away. Radiosurgery is ideal for brain metastases from colorectal cancer. And in one study, there was a 91% local control using radiosurgery on the brain. And radiation is good for bone metastases and other areas of spread as well. All the details can be found on the website at aboutcancer.com.